DeepSeek founder Liang Wenfeng is a name that's been making waves in the AI world lately, but who exactly is he? And how did this relatively unknown figure manage to outsmart some of the biggest tech giants on the planet? To understand his story, we'll need to dive into the groundbreaking work of his company, DeepSeek, and its revolutionary impact on artificial intelligence. In December 2024, DeepSeek achieved something extraordinary. Their V3 model, built using just 248 low-end GPUs, hardware considered basic by today's standards, outperformed some of the most advanced AI systems in coding, logical reasoning, and mathematics. This wasn't just a win for DeepSeek, it was a wake-up call for the entire AI industry. So what made this possible? And more importantly, what does Liang Wenfeng's journey tell us about the future of innovation? Stick around as we unpack the story behind one of the most remarkable achievements in modern AI history and discover how necessity truly became the mother of invention. In December 2024, a small Chinese startup named DeepSeek sent shockwaves through the global AI community with a breakthrough that challenged tech giants and redefined the boundaries of artificial intelligence. Their V3 model, trained on just 248 low-end NVIDIA H800 GPUs, hardware considered basic by today's standards, outperformed some of the most advanced models in coding, logical reasoning, and mathematics. This achievement wasn't just impressive, it was revolutionary. It proved that innovation doesn't always require vast resources or billion-dollar budgets. So, how did this happen? And more importantly, who is the man behind it all? Liang Wenfeng was born in 1985 in Jiangxi, a coastal city in China's Guangdong province. Raised in a modest household by his father, a primary school teacher, Liang showed an early aptitude for mathematics. While other children were playing games or sports, he spent hours solving puzzles and equations, finding joy and unraveling their secrets. This love for numbers would shape his entire career. By his teenage years, Liang's problem-solving skills stood out. He had a knack for breaking down complicated challenges into smaller, manageable steps, a skill that later helped him tackle real-world problems in technology and finance. At 17, his dedication earned him a spot at Xiang University, one of China's top schools, where he studied electronic information engineering. During college, Liang dove into subjects like data analysis and computer systems, becoming fascinated by how math could explain financial markets. He studied tools like probability-based models and algorithms to predict trends, catching the attention of his professors, who gave him advanced projects and research opportunities. By his final year, he focused on algorithmic trading, using computer programs to make fast, math-driven stock market decisions. This work laid the foundation for his future career. Around this time, Liang faced a pivotal choice. Wang Tao, the founder of drone company DJI, invited him to join as a partner. Though the offer promised wealth, Liang turned it down. He believed AI would transform industries far beyond drones. Instead of joining DJI, he chose to start his own company, aiming to pioneer AI-driven solutions. His vision began taking shape during the 2008 financial crisis when global markets were in turmoil. As banks collapsed and economies wobbled, most people panicked. But Liang, armed with his math expertise, saw an opportunity. He gathered a team of classmates to explore machine learning, a type of AI that learns from data. Their goal was to build computer programs that could analyze markets faster and smarter than humans. This approach, known as quantitative trading, relied on mathematical models to spot patterns in stock prices, economic reports, and global trends. The team started by collecting mountains of data, stock prices, unemployment rates, even news headlines, and fed this information into experimental algorithms. Tweaking them to predict market swings wasn't easy. Early models failed constantly, especially as the economy kept shifting. What if we adjust for investor panic? Liang suggested during late-night coding sessions. His team persisted, refining their programs to account for unpredictable human behavior. Slowly, their algorithms began identifying hidden trends, such as how falling housing prices affected tech stocks, trends traditional traders missed. Months of trial and error paid off. While their system wasn't perfect, it started making accurate predictions in the volatile market 
flagging when certain stocks were about to rebound and giving the team small but meaningful wins. These successes drew attention at Shang University, where professors saw Liang's work as proof that AI could reshape finance. By 2009, Wall Street and other financial hubs were embracing quantitative trading, just as Liang had anticipated. His project became a case study in innovation during crisis, a blend of math, technology, and sheer persistence. Though he turned down a job at DJI years earlier, this work cemented his belief that AI wasn't just the future of finance, but of nearly every industry. In 2013, Liang took his first step into professional trading by co-founding Hangxiao Jacob Investment Management with his college friend Xu Jin. Here, Liang tested his AI-driven trading strategies in real markets, learning how to adapt algorithms to unpredictable conditions. Two years later, the pair launched Hangxiao High Flyer Technology, focusing on blending advanced math and AI to create smarter trading systems. Their timing was perfect. China's financial markets were expanding, offering new opportunities for tech-driven firms like theirs. High Flyer made waves in 2016 by releasing its first AI trading model. Unlike traditional methods, this system used deep learning, a type of AI that improves by analyzing vast amounts of data to decide when to buy or sell stocks. The results were impressive. During a volatile market period in early 2017, High Flyer's AI trading system maintained consistent profits while competing firms experienced losses. Growth exploded. By late 2016, High Flyer managed over 1 billion yuan, about $140 million, outpacing older rivals. A key moment came in 2015 when the company launched 10 investment products in a single day, supercharging its ability to raise funds. Liang's focus on constant innovation kept their algorithms sharp, blending new AI breakthroughs with real-time market data. By 2019, High Flyer ranked among China's big four quantitative trading firms. This success proved that homegrown companies could compete globally using cutting-edge tech. For Liang, it was just the beginning, a stepping stone toward his larger vision of AI transforming industries far beyond finance. As High Flyer grew, Liang faced a critical challenge. The company needed massive computing power to keep its AI trading systems ahead of the competition. In 2019, he bet big, spending 200 million yuan, about $28 million, to build Firefly No. 1, a supercharged AI training system equipped with 1,100 specialized graphics cards. Firefly No. 1 could crunch financial data at lightning speed, helping High Flyer's AI make smarter, faster trades. But Liang didn't stop there. In 2021, he doubled down with Firefly No. 2, investing a jaw-dropping 1 billion yuan, $140 million. This upgrade packed 10,000 of NVIDIA's top-tier A100 GPUs, a move that shocked the industry. To put its power in perspective, Firefly No. 2 could handle as many calculations as 100,000 high-end laptops working together. Few companies in China, let alone a trading firm, had ever built something this advanced. Firefly No. 2 wasn't just powerful, it was efficient. It slashed energy use by 40% and costs by half compared to older systems, thanks to smarter cooling methods, energy-saving designs, and custom parts that sped up data flow between GPUs. These tweaks let High Flyer train bigger AI models without burning through cash or electricity. Though built for stock market predictions, the Firefly system soon became key to High Flyer's bigger ambitions. Liang saw its potential to tackle AI challenges far beyond finance, from healthcare to climate modeling. In May 2023, Liang took his biggest risk yet, pivoting from finance to pursue general artificial intelligence, AGI, AI that can outperform humans at most tasks, from writing code to diagnosing diseases. While most AI tools focus on narrow jobs like chatbots or image generators, AGI aims to think and adapt like a human. By July 2023, Liang launched DeepSeek, a startup with a bold mission, create human-level AI. This put him in direct competition with China's tech giants, all racing to dominate AI. But Liang had a plan, 
instead of chasing quick profits, he bet on young talent, hiring fresh graduates from top universities. Raw smarts beat experience here. DeepSeek focused on their work instead of seeking media attention, avoiding publicity to concentrate on long-term research. Here's how it worked. DeepSeek 5 2 combined two breakthroughs. The new multi-head latent attention helped process information much faster while using less computing power, an important achievement since it let the model perform well without needing as many resources, something AI researchers had been trying to accomplish for a long time. DeepSeek saved money by using a method called mixture of experts. When someone asks a question, the system figures out which expert model is best suited to answer it and only turns on that specific part. For example, if you ask about finance, only the finance expert is activated while other parts stay off. This smart approach helped DeepSeek run much more cheaply than if it had to use the whole system for every question. Here's how it worked. DeepSeek V2 combined two breakthroughs. The new multi-head latent attention helped process information much faster while using less computing power. An important achievement since it let the model perform well without needing as many resources, something AI researchers had been trying to accomplish for a long time. DeepSeek saved money by using a method called mixture of experts. When someone asks a question, the system figures out which expert model is best suited to answer it and only turns on that specific part. For example, if you ask about finance, only the finance expert is activated while other parts stay off. This smart approach helped DeepSeek run much more cheaply than if it had to use the whole system for every question. Companies quickly lowered their prices, making small businesses and startups very happy. Finally, they could afford AI tools once reserved for tech giants. Analysts called it the democratization of AI, breaking the myth that advanced tech needed billionaire budgets. DeepSeek's achievement was particularly notable given the company's relatively small size compared to tech giants. The success of V2 demonstrated that innovation and clever engineering could level the playing field, allowing smaller teams to compete effectively with well-funded competitors. The model's low energy use addressed a growing concern, AI's environmental cost. By needing fewer computers to run, DeepSeek V2 showed how to make AI more environmentally friendly, which matters because data centers around the world use more electricity than entire countries. This breakthrough had potential applications in edge computing, mobile devices, and other scenarios where processing power and energy consumption were limiting factors. On December 26, 2024, DeepSeek prepared to unveil a groundbreaking AI project, DeepSeek V3. What made this achievement special was that it was done using basic hardware. DeepSeek V3 was built using just 248 NVIDIA H800 GPUs, which many consider basic equipment in AI development. This was very different from big Silicon Valley companies, which usually use hundreds of thousands of more powerful GPUs. Despite using simpler equipment, DeepSeek V3 performed better than models trained on much stronger hardware, showing excellent skills in coding, logical thinking, and math. The model worked as well as OpenAI's GPT-4, which was seen as the best AI system available. Andre Karpathy, who helped start OpenAI, praised how well DeepSeek V3 worked with limited resources. DeepSeek's method was also much cheaper. Training DeepSeek V3 cost about 558 million yuan, while GPT-4's training cost between 63 and 100 million dollars. This showed that you don't always need more computing power and money to make better AI. DeepSeek V3 success came from smart new approaches like FPA, mixed precision training, and predicting multiple words at once. These methods helped DeepSeek use less computing power while maintaining quality. The training took less than 2.8 million GPU hours, while Llama 3 needed 30.8 million GPU hours. To understand how efficient DeepSeek V3's training was, think of it like a Formula One race car that beats other cars while using a smaller engine and less fuel. This success got many AI experts talking. They realized that clever methods and efficient programs could help smaller companies compete with big tech companies. By showing that top quality AI could be made with limited resources, DeepSeek changed how people think about AI development. This breakthrough created new opportunities for researchers and organizations working with smaller budgets or limited access to advanced computing equipment. At DeepSeek, Success came not just from advanced technology, but from their unique approach to building their team. 
While their AI breakthroughs amazed the industry, the way they ran their company was just as innovative. Their achievements weren't only about complex programs and powerful computers, they were about the people making these ideas real. DeepSeek stood out for its small, young team. They had just 139 engineers and researchers, much smaller than their competitor OpenAI, which had about 1,200 researchers. This small size surprised many people in an industry that usually believed bigger teams were better. Liang Wenfeng had an unusual way of building his team. He looked for bright young talent, especially recent graduates, or people with just a year or two of work experience. He often hired from top schools like Tsinghua University and Peking University, choosing young potential over experience. This was risky but led to great innovation. The company was set up to encourage new ideas. DeepSeek had very few management levels, which helped make decisions quickly and let team members take charge of their work. Liang said the company worked from the bottom up, letting people naturally find their roles and grow in their own way without too much control from above. This simple structure made a big difference in how people worked. Young researchers felt free to suggest and try new ideas. Without many layers of management, new concepts could quickly go from idea to reality without getting stuck in paperwork and procedures. This change in competition made many big companies rethink their plans and how they use their money. Scale AI's founder Alexander Wang shared his honest thoughts about it. He said DeepSeek's success was a tough wake-up call for American tech companies. While the US had become too comfortable, China had been making progress with cheaper and faster methods. Wang's words showed how the global AI field was changing and reminded big companies they needed to stay alert and keep improving. Mark Andreessen, a prominent investor, called DeepSeek R one of the most amazing breakthroughs he had ever witnessed. He was especially impressed that it was open source and could transform the AI industry. Andreessen's comments showed how DeepSeek's new approach could change not just the technology, but also how AI companies do business. The AI community began wondering how DeepSeek's achievement might shake up the market and challenge big companies like OpenAI, Gemini, and Meta. So, what do you think about Liang Wenfeng's journey and DeepSeek's groundbreaking achievements? If you found this story as inspiring as we did, make sure to give this video a thumbs up. It really helps us reach more people who are passionate about AI and innovation. And if you're new here, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications so you never miss out on stories like this one. Let us know in the comments. What's your take on how smaller teams are reshaping the future of AI? We'd love to hear from you. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one.